Welcome everybody. This morning's guest is Robin Hatcher. Robin is a expert in communication and she helps people all over the world in offices and in all walks of life to solve their communication glitches. And she's here to, with us today because we're talking about Thanksgiving and some of the glitches that might come up in our conversations over Thanksgiving, if we're fortunate enough to have those in person or whether we're doing that over the screen. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much, Madeline. It's great to be here. It's lovely to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. What would you say might be some of the hidden communication glitches that could come up? Yeah, it's interesting with um, the quarantine and the pandemic there, we are feeling so much more isolated. And what happens with when people are isolated, their stress hormones start to build. And our stress hormones, and I'm sure everyone's heard about the cortisol hormone that can be really destructive internally, but it's also an, a destructive with our brain chemistry because with stress, we our trigger points are much more activated. So something that might seem really calm and simple one day, if you're under stress, it's going to feel like a threat and you're going to be like, ah. So here we are at Thanksgiving. We've been under stress for months and months and months. And then somebody in your family who already may be triggering you from way past histories in the past says something and it sets off this trigger. I know that it's often, you know, I think about it before I'm going to see my family and I say, okay, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to get agitated. I'm not going to get emotional. And then I'm there and it just seems to take me over. Is that, is that something that your clients sometimes say? Oh, exactly. And it happens at family dinners. It happens in the workspace. And every time that I work with clients in the workspace, I work with, with leaders and emerging leaders, uh, CEOs, and they will have somebody come in front of them and everything is going well. And then they say something and off to the races. One of the tips that I really encourage people to do is to, and we hear it all the time, take that deep breath you know, really, really take that deep breath before you respond. We have, a, like a, I think it's like a fifth of a second before, between when our brain gets activated emotionally and when our body actually takes an action. And within okay. that moment, if you take a breath, you can then pull back on the reaction that you may have wanted to say and then really have your to start to program into the more logical part of you that says, hmm, maybe that's not what they meant. Let me respond in a way, maybe let me respond with a question rather than my emotional reaction that just got triggered by, based on what they said. Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. I notice um, my daughter's very good at that. She could teach me a thing or two. She <laughs> asks me the questions and mm. it, it actually throws me off. Yeah, I, I can't keep getting cross with her because I'm, I'm diverted because I want to answer the question. So that's I, so that's really interesting. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I love that because when we're answering a question based on somebody's curiosity, then we have we we feel in our own power. And the interesting thing about curiosity, that's my other tip. I'd love for people to bring more curiosity into their lives, into their holiday, into their relationships, because we often go into situations saying, oh, I know that person. I know exactly what they're like. I know exactly what they're going to say. I know exactly what they mean when they, or when they say what they're going to say. But I would love us to go into situations, especially the holiday situations, with this curiosity as if you're looking at this person like they're another species you know it's <laughs> like and, and, and there's a there's a term that I want to coin called homo unlike us you know it's like this is a species <laughs> what could they possibly be thinking so they might say something and instead before responding like that person that you know you think wow that is so interesting I wonder why they said that I wonder what they could be going through that would make them say that I wonder what they actually mean. And that's where your questions can then come up. So I love this whole curiosity part that you want to have because you, you know what? The bottom line is they are homo unlike us. They, everyone thinks completely different. Their experiences are 
completely different so that their responses and what they're saying is coming from a completely different space. Coming up to Thanksgiving, we know that we, you know, we're going to be seeing our families. We know our families. Is there some, is there something that I can do and our viewers um, can do in preparation? Because we can predict the kinds of conversations that trigger us. What can we do to set ourselves up so that when that trigger happens, we can take that deep breath and and reset, like you say? That's such a great question. To think about a real positive experience. Maybe there was a vacation that went super well. Maybe there was a Thanksgiving that everybody all got along. So focus and create and embed that into your mind and remember that. So this is the preparation that you're going in in because people can pick up on your positive intent. And so when we walk in with dread and fear and and oh my God, this is gonna be so awful. There are these emotional uh, mirror neurons that people then pick up on. And so what you wanna do is prepare yourself with all the positivity and the thoughts and the real thoughts of some of the great things that have happened. So that's, that's great. One last question before we close. So when I'm listening to you, I can hear my viewers um, in my head and they're saying, yeah, but I don't have any positive memories with my <laughs> aunt Mabel. Does it have to be about the person that you have the communication problems with or can it just be any positive image? Great, great question. No, it can be any positive image. And you want to focus on something, I mean, even nature, if you have something that, that you love in nature, if you have a favorite object, if you have a pet that you love, you know, spend some time focusing on that and getting in that zone and that feeling of those feel good hormones sur surging through you so that when you step it through that door, you are a beacon, you are an, uh, an object of positive Activity. They're wonderful tips, Robin. And I, I can already tell you, I've got an image of, because you're a, a mini Robin on my screen, I feel like I'd like to take you in my pocket and help <laughs> me when I'm, when I'm there for, for Thanksgiving. That, that if people want to find out more about you, how can they find you? Oh, yes. Please reach out to me. One of my favorite platforms is LinkedIn. So find me on LinkedIn, Robin Hatcher, or go to my website, robinhatcher.com.